Hi everybody. In a recent show, I talked about remorse and remorse of conscience. Well, I just glimpsed over it. And so I wanted to do a show on remorse and what Gurdjieff talks about with that. And remorse of conscience is a very important part of his work and the development that one has to do on oneself. It's one of the important exercises to observe. And I'm going to start with a quote from Life is Real, Only Then When I Am. Page 19. Remorse for the inner and outer manifestations of my ordinary waking state and loneliness, disappointment, satiety and the rest, but primarily to be everywhere haunted by the fear of inner emptiness. And that's something um, I think many people feel, inner emptiness, and this inner emptiness, they don't know how to fill it up. They've got a different feel, feel it as in like F double E L and how to fill it up F I double L. You know, it's like when you're hungry, you, you fill your stomach with food. It's the same with this inner emptiness. We want to fill it with something. Many people fill it without a spiritual teaching or without a exercise of how to awaken oneself. Instead, fill it with, because it's, it's gnawing at you. And people go and fill it with, I'm talking about secular people here, that go and fill it with drink or drugs or find something else to satisfy themselves just for a little while because that inner emptiness comes back it's not enough to fill it and they're constantly looking for something whether it's going to buy the next iphone or satisfy themselves with the next big movie you know it's just not quite the food that this inner emptiness needs and remorse of consciousness or conscience helps us to look at what it is that we're doing with ourselves and how we can not be affected by certain things or it helps us look at why things affect us in a certain way. I'm going to do some more quotes because that's easier than me rambling on. So this is from Views from the Real World. Our people do not work too well as regards quality. However, let the work which they have done so far serve as a source of remorse. If it will serve as a cause for remorse, it will have be of use. If not, it is good for nothing. And Gurdjieff's talking a lot about when we're looking at remorse in ourselves and the things we've done in our past, and there's, you know, we'll cringe at things we've done in the past or how we've acted. We need to change that energy because that's, if you're feeling down on it, let's say, or pissed off on it, or falling back into an old pattern, then you're being doing mechanical work. And I would recommend the show I did with Joshua, Q&A on the Gurdjieff work, put it up only the other week. He discusses this very well of how to work with oneself on this kind of thing. Probably definitely much better than how I can explain it. But it's something that we need to keep reminding people, you know, it's easy to sit there feeling sorry for yourself because of things that happened in the past or I won't do this because I mucked it up last time. We can't put old patterns onto what we're doing in the now. We need to, when we go and do things, not bring these old patterns back up and think, oh, this is going to happen like it did before. Instead of, instead we should be looking at the now and doing it with, I'm not saying new eyes, but yeah, new eyes, new ways of thinking, you know, what happens to us is how we work on the future. We need to stop living in the past and instead live in the now. That's what I'm trying to say. I might that up a bit, but hey, it's not easy doing these shows. I should be having remorse about this show afterwards. So for, from all and everything, there has gradually arisen in me the, make, the need to make clear to my reason why I personally have all the comforts which I now use and what obligation I am under for them. It is just because of this that there proceeds in me a process of remorse. So we're having to, the need to make clear to my reason why I personally have all the comforts which I now use. And those comforts which we now use, all them different eyes that we fall back on, which are patterns, because if we do a pattern and follow our patterns and become mechanical and just repeat the same things over, it feels safe and secure, doesn't it? because you're doing the same thing, so you're expecting the same result. This is why 
Gurdjieff really stresses people should go out and do different things, go and look at new impressions, inhale new impressions and don't do everything by rote and don't do the same thing day by day. And I know, I know it's um, something most people do. We're even taught this at school of patterns. You know, if we, you know, Monday we do this, Tuesday we do this, for, you know, all the way to Friday. Saturday and Sunday's the weekend, go and enjoy yourselves. But, you know, just do the same thing you do every other weekend. No, go and live and do different things and meet new people and do different actions and take the risk of seeing new places. It can be scary to go traveling. I remember when I first started doing it, you know, my stomach was all nervous and uh, butterflies and things. But once I was there, I did really enjoy it. And it is difficult to go to new places where you don't know anyone. But you've got to just walk about as if you live there because then there'll be no problems because you, you then feel like you fit in and you become part of it whilst you're looking at these new places. And OK, some towns seem to be looking the same as other towns, but go and visit, I don't know, the seaside, a mountain. Go and look at places that you wouldn't normally go and look at. Go for that swim in the sea that you keep telling yourself you're going to have and don't. Go and, I don't know, if you spend too much time in the countryside, go and walk down the city and see what kind of people live in a city and so on. You know, go and talk to a homeless person and if it's someone that you wouldn't normally talk to or if you don't really like talking to strangers, go and talk to, you know, obviously don't go just go up on the street and say, hi, I'd like to meet you, but, you know, find people that meet have time to talk to you like sadly the so homeless people i sometimes find that priests are more than happy in christian churches are more than happy to chat and I've been to a couple of mosques in the last few years where i've got to talk to the imam because they're always they're there to to speak and listen to people so you know go and do something different for and be a bit lit free there so gurdjieff talks about analuyos the other part of the moon that broke off when earth and the moon were well when the moon was created and Anilulius is the moon that can't be seen at the moment and he says that they also called it Kimi Spa never allowing one to sleep in peace and that's a kind of a thing with remorse isn't it remorse plays on us and niggles on us and never allows us to sleep in peace and in some ways that's keeping us awake as well but as long as it's not sending us to sleep in the way that we try and use that remorse to make excuses for our patterns, our way we are, the way we act, or the things we say. Instead, we should be looking at why do I say this, or why did I act like that? Which version of me, the I, put me in that situation? So, all and everything, page 112. That consequence of the properties of the organ Kundabatha had enabled them without any remorse of conscience not to carry out voluntary any duties taken upon themselves or given them by a superior. So when we had that remorse of conscience, we use that as an excuse not to do any of work, whether it's you know your secular work of going to work day by day or being with your family or whatever, but even worse, not doing the cosmic work of being harmonious and developing yourself so you can become part of the goodness that is the continuing creation of the universe and the divine divine's harmonious workings you know we use remorse of conscience to excuse ourselves from doing things when instead we should be changing that energy around and making that remorse of conscience working on that energy so that it becomes more positive and we use it in a good way rather than going, oh, what is me? All and everything, page 141. This cosmic law is that there proceeds within every arising, large and small, when in direct touch with the emanations either of the sun absolute itself or of any other sun, what is called remorse, that is a process, when every part that has arisen from the result of any one holy source of the sacred triamazi kamno as it were, revolts and criticizes the former unbecoming perceptions and the manifestations of the moment of another part of its whole, a part obtained from the results of another holy source of the same fundamental sacred cosmic law of triomasi kamno. Cosmic law of triomasi kamno, the law of free, we've got holy affirming, holy denying, holy reconciling, transubstantiating, move from my being. 
So he's saying here that um, this cosmic law, that there proceeds within every arising, large and small, when in direct touch with the emanations either of the sun absolute, so his God, his endlessness itself, or of any other sun, what is called remorse. That is a process when every part that has arisen from the results of any one holy source of the sacred triumph as he can know, firming, denying, reconciling, as it were, revolts and criticizes the former unbecoming perception. So it's like our remorse argues against what's going on, argues against us doing the work, tries its best to distract us from working in the solar way. So we need to change that energy around, but we've got to be aware of what this remorse is doing to us and why it's doing that. So we want to understand what it is, because we've got to look back at, at ourselves. Why, deep down, we don't want to do the work or we don't want to take part in it? You know, is it just because we're lazy human beings or is there other reasons in us? You know, everybody has different reasons why the why we, there's an eye in us that distracts us from doing the work, from doing the soda work. So all and everything, page 342. Every action of man is good in the objective sense, if it is done according to his conscience, and every action is bad, if from it he later experiences remorse. So that's another little telltale of if you're not doing things rightly. I know we did the Q&A with Josh the other week, and someone was asking, how do I know if I'm not uh, doing the work rightly? But if you're doing the work and, some, and you're feeling remorse at the things you're doing in the work because maybe you're not doing it rightly or correctly, you know, maybe that's a little wake up call to look at yourself to see what, what you're doing or why you're doing. Or do elements of remorse from your past life of what's going on in your life when you was a child or when you was a teenager or when you was a young adult suddenly come springing in to try and distract you from doing the work. Then work on that sudden past life image coming in, you know, do the exercise that Joshua recommended in the Q&A and Gurdjieff recommends of you looking back, relaxing, looking back on yourself and not falling into the old patterns of what, how that event affected you at that time, but instead try to look at it in a more calming, uh, clear way of why this happened or that happened. All, right, then. All and everything, page 381. Those of them who chance to receive and experience some kind of shock to organic shame, the associations proceeding from their previous impressions, almost always became changed, calmed, and sometimes even entirely ceased. There is then automatically obtained such a combination of functioning in their common presences as temporarily frees the data present in their subconsciousness for the manifestation of the divine impulse conscience and for its participation in the functioning of their ordinary consciousness, with the result that this said remorse of conscience proceeds in them. And so when we're working on ourselves, we want to <laughs> manifest the divine impulse conscience. And he's saying here that for its participation in the functioning of their ordinary consciousness is the result that this said remorse of conscience proceeds in them. We're trying to, in some ways, shock our system into doing this work. You know, we need them little shocks to keep us on track. And sometimes remorse of conscience gives us that little shock to either go ahead and do the work or just just stop and go oh no woe is me I'm not worthy well we're all worthy we can do this we have to be aware that we do you know these things happen the shocks are there to help us get through and on to the next level we're all worthy of doing this work it takes effort but we can do it all and everything page 538 in their presences, there arose more and more frequently the causes for the manifestation of the being impulse of remorse of conscience. The sensations thereby induced, which are similar to those which arise from being part dog duty, infallibly led to the suppression and the enslaving of the denying principle inherent in their common presences called self-calming. 
we don't want to suppress anything. We want to be working on this and nothing holds us back. We need to work with all the energies, all three of the um, the forces, holy affirming, holy denying and holy reconciling to bring them all together. And go to, um, go to Jeff, Joshua talks about self-calming again in that Q&A that I did recently with him. Um, last week that would have been so you can go and listen to josh to explain this much better than i can but it's interesting if you work with the books be always bob's tales to his grandson and and everything and you're reading this work you're taking it in and maybe you're not understanding it first off straight away but your subconscious is digesting it and it's all about fathoming the gist You know, as Gurdjieff says in Views from the Real World, if a man knows how to be mercilessly sincere with himself, then to the question, what are you? He will not expect a comforting reply. It's difficult to look at ourselves. It's difficult to see what we really are. We all wish that we were angels and that everybody else saw us as angelic. But we're not. But we And to do this kind of work, we need to look at our devilish sides and our awful sight that we can be you know and work towards being a better person a better human being right then all and everything page 959 and this has got some of Gurdjieff's special words in it during those years this planet underwent a common cosmic process of Chernobyl its center of gravity was also displaced. During such years, there increases everywhere in the psyche of beings inhabiting any such planet a blagon or renian sensation, remorse of conscience for one's past deeds against one's own convictions. But there on your planet, instead of this remorse of conscience, there usually arise there epidemics, black death, cholera, influenza which i find quite interesting is that what's going on now 2020 2021 when i was doing this research for this for this show about remorse and i read that and i'm like my god maybe this is an awakening up time for humanity which i've always thought since the beginning of 2020s lockdown scenarios and as many of you might have seen in my old shows you know i felt a lot of this was all very dehumanizing but maybe it is a time for humanity's next stage and an evolution. Yeah, maybe there is a virus out there to wake people up in whatever way it's happened, whether it's man-made, natural or not. I can't comment because I'm not a viral inspector. But it's strange. And I really I've always thought that we're living in the end times. I've always thought that I would live in the end times. And this feels like the end times. But it doesn't have to be in time that the whole planet gets wiped out. Hopefully it's some kind of evolution onto the next stage of what humanity should be doing. Hopefully out of what's been happening in the last, well, since 2020 and into this year, 2021, which we're halfway through, hopefully learned beings will come from out of this and take us forward to the next stage. Prepare humanity for those that survive. So... Where's my not ones? Oh no, in search of the miraculous, I was going to do page 230. There is, as it were, a separate account kept for every man. His efforts and sacrifices are written down on one side of the book and his mistakes and misdeeds on the other side. What is written down on the positive side can never atone for what is written down on the negative side. What is recorded on the ne negative side can only be wiped out by the truth. That is to say, by an instant and complete confession to himself and to others, and above all, to the teacher. And being true to yourself is really important. Really, you know, if you can be true to yourself, then you can go forward afterwards and be true to everybody else. It's really difficult to be honest with other people when you're lying to yourself. But I also think it's very important to realise that, you know, we have <laughs> the book of what you do wrong or... Uh, your bad deeds on one side and your good book where you do your good deeds on the other. I've always felt that we've got a devil on one shoulder and an angel on the other. I've even wrote in a book about it called um, Angels and Devils, where, you know, we can be influenced by the little devil on our shoulder to do 
naughty things or to try and get away with things that we shouldn't do and there's the angel trying to keep us on the path of the right or the righteous and sometimes we want to ignore it because we want to take the shortcut but the shortcuts well one pays penalties for taking shortcuts so this next, next bit's um, going to be not I love a bit of not Gurdjieff often spoke about the need to repair the past, not to dwell on it and indulge in use, useless self-reproach, but to feel remorse of conscience, the opposite of self-calming. So, again, I'm going to take you back to Q&A with Gurdjieff's work with Josh. He talks about this quite a bit and really explains it well. But obviously not does as well, so go and read C.S. Knott's books. And not carries on with something that Araj told him. If the rationalist feels an ache for perfection, he pays no attention to it or dreams it would be cured by better art, writing or living conditions, which is what I was meaning to try to say earlier when people go and look for other ways of filling that inner emptiness inside them, that hunger that they've got, which is really for spiritual development and waking up. And instead, they fill it with, you know, going and reading the newspaper and uh, fixating on what bad news is happening out there in the world. Anyway, continuing with Virage, that's just an example. They have been dreaming of this for thousands of years and real remorse of conscience that follows a realisation of unfulfilled being duty has no meaning for them. So we want to have fulfilled being duty. We want to feel fulfilled in what we're doing. And I know what it's like to have unfulfilled being duty. There are times, many times in my life when I thought I could have done that better. Or I should have done some Gurdjieff work then. And instead I found a distraction to go and do something else, which hasn't been at all satisfying and probably hasn't helped the development of my soul at all. But that's the little devil <laughs> leading me astray. But it, we have to take control of that. I can't blame it on the devil. I've got to blame it on myself. That's my remorse of conscience. And in Bills Above Towers, Gurdjieff writes a lot about the A-I-E-I-O-R. The sacred A-I-O-E-I-O-R is the sigh of objective remorse. It is what one should feel in the presence of a being who has developed himself into a higher state of consciousness than one's own. A wish to be what one ought to be. And again, that's a Raj telling not that. That should be what we're aiming for. We we're wishing to be what we ought to be. And we should be working on that. And that remorse of conscience is when we're not doing it. We should be using that remorse of conscience to push us forward so that we do do this. And not rights. When we are in a state of self-remembering, elements in our body experience remorse. Not a feeling of inferiority, but a kind of sorrow for what we are, combined with aspiration. And a light dawns on us. We can observe something now in ourselves which has been hidden in darkness. And again, that's Araj telling him this. And Araj goes on. The method provides a meaning of discovering and having a realisation of one's abnormality. And we're all abnormal, but we're trying to become better beings. So the method provides a meaning of discovering and having a realisation of one's abnormality. This inspires a wish to change, which is organic shame. This is connected with the holy, the aspiration of lower vibrations to share the experience of higher vibrations. It is that which we feel in the presence of a superior being. And not right. If you acknowledge your sin and feel remorse of conscience for having done wrong, your sin is already forgiven. If you continue to do wrong, Knowing it to be so, you can commit a sin that is difficult to forgive. So it's all about whether we know what we're doing. Are we awake enough and aware enough of what we're doing? And most times we know when we're doing things wrong because our conscience niggles at us. But we like to ignore it and carry on doing those stupid wrong things when we should be doing positive work and working on ourselves to develop our being. And I'm going to finish with... Right, I've done in such miraculous. So one last one from not. Having realised one's nothingness, one must not give way to despondency, 
that suffer real remorse of conscience. Regrets and self-reproach waste energy. You don't want to be wasting energy. You want to make use of the energy and use that energy and make it into higher vibration. Regrets and self-reproach waste energy. Remorse of conscience helps in some mysterious way to repair the past. And it is strange. It does repair the past because that exercise you do where you're taking yourself back in your mind and with your feelings to that event or time that you can remember a trauma or traumatic event happening to you or whatever it is you're dealing with because it's different for many people the more you work on it using the Gurdjieff exercises the more you break the patterns and stop becoming mechanical and instead start becoming a real being because you start learning how to deal with things in a different way and it does repair the past you don't want to be carrying the past with you forwards into your life you want to be leaving the past behind, being living in the now, ready to step forward. You don't want all that baggage with you. But it's something, it's not easy to deal with because we don't want to do it. We want to leave the past behind. But hopefully you are working on yourselves enough and you are getting help or therapy or whatever it is, a way of, you know, if it's books you can find to read about how to let go of the past so you can forward go forward and be the person you want to be so love you all peace and out thank you for watching